So you're in the market for a new watch. Well, you may be a family member trying to get a gift for a watch collector, or you may yourself be a watch collector looking to add a piece to your collection. Well, you don't have to look any further. At Perfect Timepiece, we've done the work to compile a list of the top automatic watches that are under $500. So let's check it out. So thank you for sticking with us. Um, immediately, the brands that should come to your, to your mind, um, the brands that you should look at are Seiko, Hamilton, um, even a few Tissot watches will uh, make it under that $500 bracket. And if you're really lucky and you can find a sale, you should look at some Frederic Constance. So I have my notebook here with me. Um, so I can reference some model numbers of specific pieces that you should look at. Um, and, and right off the bat, let's, let's look at the Seiko um, diving type watches. Um, immediately, what comes to mind is the SKX007. This is an all black diver with really big um, in hour indices that are completely filled with loom. Um, it, it's a very iconic watch. It has been around in the community for decades at this point. I, I was actually very surprised to learn um, how old the watch is because it looks so contemporary and so polished. Um, alternatively, if you like the design of that watch but want a little bit of color, you can look at the SKX009 which is exactly the same as the 007. It just has a blue dial and a blue and red bezel. So those are some pretty cool watches. Um, personally, a Seiko diver that has caught my attention is the Seiko SNZH55. Um, it, it has a little bit of a different look than the 007 and the 009, but in my opinion, it, it looks pretty schnazzy, and I would definitely give it a spin if you're looking to not break the bank, but still acquire a new timepiece. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit more dressy, we also have some Seiko dress watches that we found for under the $500 price point. Um, we're looking at the Seiko Sarb 033. That's actually a piece that I personally own. Um, it, it's in my personal collection, and it is a wonderful, wonderful piece with a nice black dial and beautiful, beautiful sword hands that just work well um, it, it even has some loom on the dial, which is something that I personally like. Um, I, you know, I, I like the utility of watches, so um, the loom on the 033 helps, uh, helps add functionality to the watch. Um, moving on, oh, so if you want the 033 but don't like black-faced watches, you can get the 035 which is a white color. Um, personally, I picked the 033 because I like the, the black versus the white, but that is a matter of personal taste. Um, if you're looking for something that's dressy but a little bit different uh, than just white or black, I would say you should look at the Seiko Sarb 065 or the Sarb 017. The 65 is nicknamed the Cocktail Time. It was actually made, uh, not made, sorry, designed by a famous bartender from Japan, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but it has a wonderful sunburst dial, and um, it has a, a blue second hand with those sword hands from the, from the Saab 033 and the 035. And it just makes the piece look really amazing. The one thing I would say about that watch is that the strap is 
a little bit bad and probably should be replaced, so you should factor that into the cost, but even after you factor a new strap into the cost, it would be well below $500. Um, an another watch that is kind of dressy in style, although not really, is the Saab 017, which is the Alpinist. Um, it actually has a really long history um, in the Everest expedition, I believe. Um, but it does have uh, green and yellow, that's its color scheme, green, yellow, and brown, which is a little off-putting to some people, uh, including me. <laughs> but a lot of people really like the Saab 017 Alpinist. So, um, I, I have to give honorable mention to the um, Seiko Monster, the nickname Monster Divers, but I'm not going to cover them in this video simply because I don't like the design of them. So I personally wouldn't buy them if I had $500 to spend on an automatic wristwatch. So I think I have my Hamilton notes in the back here. Yeah, I do. Um, we have the Hamilton Khaki King. That's a watch that, similar to the Rolex Datejust, has um, the date, the day, uh, at the 12 o'clock position, and then under it, it also has the date. Uh, it looks interesting. Um, the dial looks a little cluttered for my taste, but um, that, that's just my opinion. Uh, moving on, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field, which looks uh, very similar to the, the Khaki King. They're in the same line, obviously, so they should look roughly the same. The, I actually like this watch a little bit better. It has, you know, just the date window. It doesn't give you the day. And it actually has a red tipped uh, second hand. So that, that's a plus in my book. I've always wanted a watch with a red tip. So um, both of these watches are well underneath the $500 price point. So if you are saving up for a watch and you really don't want to wait until you have $500 to spend, you can kind of splurge and reward yourself with these. Um, but if you wait a little bit longer, you can pick up uh, the Hamilton Jazzmaster Viewmatic. And these, these are watches that I actually went into uh, Tourneau in the mall and checked out for myself, and they are very beautiful. Uh, the, f the first one that I noticed online is actually one that has uh, uh, Arabic markers at 12, 6, and 9. Uh, a date window at the three o'clock position, and then it has applied indices on all the other hour positions. Um, and it actually has an inner ring in the dial that has a nice textured pattern. Um, it, it looks really, really gorgeous online, and the, the textured pattern really holds up to, the, to my impression of it when I went into the Tourneau. But, when I went into the Tourneau, I was actually more blown away by the Hamilton Jazzmaster Viewmatic that just has the applied hour indices at all positions. Uh, I think it also does have a date window at the 3 o'clock position, um, but that it, it doesn't have the inner ring with the textured pattern, but it doesn't need it in my opinion. It's so refined, it's so sophisticated, um, but, but that's just my taste. Um, a lot of the watches in my collection, actually all of the watches in my collection have indices over Arabic numbers, so it's, it's just a personal taste. Um, so I, I wrote on my book in my notes that Tissot is your frenemy. They're going to have a lot of watches that are out of your price point, um, but again, if you wait for sales, you'll be able to find some really, really, really good timepieces um, like the one that I'm wearing uh, on sale for under $500. So um, the Tissot Visa date is uh, around the $400 price point. It, it's a very classic, timeless looking design. It has the old Tissot logo and it has a day date at the three o'clock position. Very classic look, definitely something that I'm looking at 
getting in the near future. I might sell a few of my Seikos or um, move some money around to, to get one. Um, but moving on, we have the Powermatic 80 chronometer, which is actually the watch that I'm wearing. Maybe I'll zoom in on the camera here. Maybe not. Um, Again, if you're lucky and you find a sale on this, uh, I did, and I paid, I think, around 480 for this watch. Uh, the band is amazing, the clasp is amazing, and the, the detail on the dial is really outstanding. Tissot really blew me away with the watch. So definitely pick up that piece if you find it under, under $500. Um, moving on, the last Tissot that I'd recommend is the T Classic. It's very similar. It actually has the same modified movement as the Powermatic 80, um, but the watch has a bit of a different design on the dial. And I've, I've been seeing this watch on Instagram, because that's generally where I look at watches, um, or at least watch pictures. And I, I saw a few pictures of this watch and I, I fell a little bit in love with it. Um, so moving on, um, if, if you're lucky, you may be able to find a Frederic Constant. Uh, personally, I, I know a lot of people don't like Frederic Constant, but personally, I don't really mind them. Um, just as long as you know, like they, they don't make real gold pieces, at, at least at the $500 price point, because that would be ridiculous. Um, so they're all gold toned. Uh, they're not even plated. So just keep that in mind. Um, the Frederic Constant Index, uh, if, if you find it on sale or if you stretch your budget just a little bit, I know you guys are going to hate me for that, but if, if you stretch your budget by $60, you can afford it right now on Amazon. Uh, it, it's an amazing watch. Um, I personally don't really like the rose gold tone of the watch, um, but, but the uh, applied indices look amazing. Um, personally, from my own Frederic Constant that I own, I can speak to the level of fit, finish, and quality that Frederic Constant uses when making their timepieces. Um, this, this piece looks a lot like um, some of the Patek Philippe's that I've seen, and it's simply amazing. So really, I, I would pick it up um, if I didn't have my other Frederic Constant. Um, so speaking of, uh, let's move on to the Frederic Constant that I have. Um, you would have to be pretty lucky to find this under $500 but it's a, a Frederic Constant slimline that's gold tone. It is amazing. It has an amazing cream dial, amazing buckle. Oh, it just exudes class and elegance. Um, moving on, we have the Frederic Constant runabout, uh, and this has Arabic numbers all the way around the dial. And like the Hamilton we talked about earlier, it has an inner ring on the dial that has some texture. Um, I, I haven't seen this watch personally, whereas the other Frederic Constants, I have seen them personally. Um, but if it's anything like the other pieces that Frederic Constant makes, it's really, really high quality, very high attention to detail. Um, which, again, if you're buying a Swiss watch, you're, you're gonna get that. Um, so that wraps up our, our list of the top um, automatic pieces under $500. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this doesn't count used pieces and it doesn't count vintage pieces. So if you wanna look around, uh, oh, and it doesn't count like small independent brands. So we thought that if we included all those things, it would just be too much, really, to cover in one video. We may make a follow-up video about independent brands and, and or used watches. Um, but if you want something um, maybe that's around the $1,000 price point, but you, you don't want it used, or you don't want it new necessarily, 
You can buy used um, from watch forums and get it that way. So I hope that this video helped you kind of find a piece that you really like that's under the $500 price point. I personally would buy every single one of these watches if I had the money. Um, they're, they're really amazing. So I hope this has helped you. And if you would like to see more watch videos similar to this, uh, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you later. Bye.